In this video, I'm going to give you the eight prong test to determine if you're an employee or an independent contractor. My name is Matt Eason. I'm an employment attorney in Sacramento, and I've represented hundreds of employees in questions just like this. And to determine if you're entitled to overtime, meal breaks, rest breaks, things of that nature, it's important to know if you're properly classified as an employee versus an independent contractor. And in this video, we're going to walk through the steps on exactly how to make that determination. Before we get into the eight factors, I want to make sure we understand the big picture, and that is control. All these factors in some way have to do with who's in control of the relationship, who controls the product, who controls the way things get done, and the mechanisms and the mannerisms. So when you go through the factors, think of control. The first factor is, do you have your own independent business or is this the only person you work for? For example, if you have a cleaning service and you work exclusively for one person, then you're most likely going to be an employee. Contrast that with if you work for different people on different days or different projects, you're most likely going to be an independent contractor. The second factor we want to look at are your employer's primary business purpose. If we look at the same example that we use on the janitorial, if your person that you're working for is a janitorial service and you're performing janitorial services for them, you're most likely an employee. Contrast that if the employer is an auto parts dealership and you come in one day a week to perform janitorial services, then you're most likely an independent contractor. The third factor we look at is who provides the instrumentality or the tools? Who has the equipment that you use to perform your services? If the employer is providing you all the materials and all the equipment, they're probably an employer. On the alternative, if you bring your own tools, you bring your own equipment, that tends to lead to suggesting that you're an independent contractor. The fourth factor has to do with a specialized skill. Is there something about your knowledge base and your skill that you bring an extra benefit to the employer that the employer may not know? And if so, you're most likely going to be an independent contractor. In contrast, if the person you're working for has the same skill sets as you or greater skill sets as you in the subject area, you're most likely going to be an employee. The fifth factor that we look at has to do with efficiency. If you are able to work harder, faster, and smarter, and you personally benefit from that, then you might be an independent contractor. But if you work harder, smarter, and faster, and you don't receive any special benefit from that, it all goes to your employer, then you're most likely an employee. The sixth factor that we look at has to do with duration of employment. If the assignment is such that you're going to work for an indefinite period of time, you're most likely an employee. If you contrast that with a situation where you're hired for a limited period of time, one month, two weeks, or for a certain project, then you're most likely going to be an independent contractor. A seventh factor really important to determine in the relationship is how you're paid. If you were paid by the job or by the project, then you're most likely going to be an independent contractor. If you're paid by the hour or on a weekly or periodic basis, you're most likely an employee. The eighth factor we look at has to do with how you treat the relationship with your employer. If the two of you treat one another like an employer and employee, then you're probably an employer-employee. If you have a more distant relationship, a more hands-off supervisor relationship, then you're probably an independent contractor. We just went through eight important factors and determined if you're an employee or an independent contractor. There's another dozen or so that might apply in your case, but those are the primary ones that we utilize. If you've got any questions, I hope you find an attorney that can help you with that issue. If you're in California and you've got further questions, hopefully you reach out to me. My name again is Matt Eason. I'm with the law firm of Eason and Tamronini. We're located at 1234 8th Street, Sacramento, California, 95814. You can call me at 916. 438-1819. Reach us on the web at www.capcitylaw.com. I wish you the best and hope to hear from you.